So this video will talk about black and white etching, uh, which is generally but not exclusively done on copper plates. You can use other metal plates. But etching is where you are using an acid to etch into the metal. And that leaves a line in the copper that will hold ink. So again, it's kind of the reverse or the opposite of relief printing, where the plate of copper is left smooth, the ink will wipe away and be the color of the paper. But where you have these etched lines into the copper, the ink will be held in those lines and will print black in the print. So here's the plate from this image, and here's the print. This is an artist, a contemporary artist named Rebecca Morgan, who was a visiting artist here at Texas State a few years ago. Uh, this is one of the prints that she did while she was here that we auditioned for. Um, the way, you know, I'm not, this is not a demo video, but the way you get the lines in there is you coat the, the, the metal plate with a ground, and the ground itself will protect the copper from the acid. And then you take your etching needle and you draw through that ground, exposing the copper. And when you're done, you put the whole plate into a bath of ferric chloride acid. And the acid literally eats away the metal where you've exposed it, resulting in the lines that will hold the ink. So, as opposed to dry point, which is just directly scrap scratching into the metal, this instead is you're just drawing through a waxy ground, a dark waxy ground called a hard ground to expose the copper. Um, so when you look closely at these lines, there is no fuzziness that is distinctive of dry point. Instead, the lines are very clean and they are closer to what you might think of as like a, an ink pen kind of line. And you see there's no variation in how thick the line is. There might be some variation in how long you etch it. So you can leave it in the acid for 30 seconds or five minutes or an hour, and that can change the line. Um, and you also see that the density of mark making can change the value. So if you really bring the lines into a dense network, the tone will get darker. But if you have sparse line work, then the tone will be lighter. Um, but that's straight up line etching. It's a great example. Another print by the same artist that she did on the same visit is really huge. And again, this is 100% straight up line etching. You can apply the ground to the copper plate and etch it as many times as you want within certain limits. So you don't have to get everything done perfect the first time. You can put the ground on, draw, etch, print, and then decide you need to add more lines. Then you can put the ground on again, do more drawing, etch it again. You can do that as many times as you want. You can also scrape and burnish into the copper if you wish afterwards. Um, but you can see how this out here is nothing but really dense line work from the, the line etching. That's how that darkness is achieved is just by how dense that line work is similar to other places, you know, where the line work is really, really dense and, and the etching is deep, it's nice and dark. But the line work can be very, very faint too if the etching was only, was allowed to etch just for a, a matter of minutes as well. And another fantastic print by Rebecca. Um, etching doesn't have to be just line work. It can be other things, too. So this is a really beautiful print by an artist named Terry Allen. 
who is not, strictly speaking, a printmaker, although he has made many prints. Um, he is from Lubbock originally, uh, from Texas. He's kind of a, a hero of Texas art over the last few decades. Um, but this print was made and published by Flatbed Press in Austin. Um, and it's a little etching with Chincolet, and I'll explain Chincolet here in a minute. Um, so in this etching, acid was used, just like in the previous print I showed you, but instead of hard ground line etch, there's really two primary techniques here. One is soft ground, so these more pencil-y kind of lines in there, that's done with soft ground, and this is aqua tint. Um, there to get these broad areas. So in the previous print I showed you a dark area that was achieved just by the density of lines. This is different. This is a dark area achieved by aqua tint. And I'm not going to explain the technical aspects of aqua tint, but just know that etching can take many forms in terms of how you allow the acid to etch the metal plate. Now with Chincolet, so here, I'll set these two next to each other. Here is another etching um, and uh, dry point both together. And both of these prints have chincolet. And by chincolet, what I mean is that right there at the edge, you can just barely see that there is a separate piece of paper. So what's happening is this very thin piece of Japanese paper is being glued to the thick printing paper at the same time as the plate is printed. Same here and right here at the edge you can see just barely this edge of, of thin toned Japanese paper. So the paper is warm white whereas the backing thick paper is more of a bright white. In this case the backing paper is a toned paper but the Japanese paper is warmer and more sort of orangey than even the backing paper. So chincolet is a technique where you are essentially printing onto a collage or uh, you, you're gluing this sheet in and printing at the same time. Uh, we will do a technical video of that later. But you can see how etching and intaglio in general can really do amazing detail. It can do detail that is finer than even anything you could probably draw uh, because getting a drawing implement that will give you such a fine line as what you see in here and in other parts of this image. Like look at this area right there. That level of detail would just be impossible in almost anything except an etching. Um, and by the way, with this one, this, this piece by Terry Allen, it's called The Hitter. And his father, Terry Allen's father was a baseball player and his mother was a pianist. And so you see here, his mother is sitting at a piano where most of the, none of the piano really is depicted, but her gesture is sitting at a bench playing a piano. You can see her arm sort of resting on the keys there. And then his dad is playing baseball. And maybe this is his house as a child, I'm not sure. You see some trees and a landscape, a flatland landscape distinctive of the panhandle of Texas. But the strange thing is, is the way he's placed these two together is it looks like his father's about to whack his mother's head off with the baseball bat. Um, so without drawing any further conclusions, I'll just switch to the next image. Here is another black and white etching. Um, so this is hard ground line etch and nothing else. Um, it's by an Italian artist, Alessandro Maggia. Uh, he puts his little, his name, A. Maggia, uh, into the plate. Most people don't do that, but he, he, he did. Um, and this is just straight up line etching. So you can see again, the level of detail that would be difficult to obtain in any kind of drawing media. Uh, because of the, the amount of detail that the copper plate can hold. And one final one to show you. 
This is an artist named um, uh, Lydia Madrid, who was born and grew up in Texas, but lived her adult life in New Mexico. So what you see is here some line, hard ground line etch. But this knife form is an open bite, really deeply etched form into the plate. It's difficult to show in the video, but this is like a low relief. So this form is really sticking up. If I flip the print over, you can clearly see the embossment from the other direction. And that shows you how deeply this part was etched into the metal plate. And then this is some aqua tint that is providing this tone out here. Um, and she did all this first and then she did added that stuff afterwards. Of course, in all these, you see the distinctive embossment of the plate because again, you're running this through the press under really, really high pressure. So all of these prints have that distinctive look. That's the basics for black and white etching.